So what is this hieroglyph that looks like a plant of some sort, and how was it used to describe the king in ancient Egypt? That's what we'll get into in this video today. So what is this hieroglyph? Well, you might guess it's a plant. It is what's usually called a sedge. That is a type of plant that grows in marshes, usually in sort of groups or tufts, and has a triangular jointless kind of stem. In ancient Egyptian, this sign could be used as a logogram, that is like for the whole word, for the word suit, meaning sedge, as you might expect. But more often, it was used for the sounds in this word, for specifically the S and the W, which we today pronounce as su. And so it was used to spell a variety of words that had these sounds in it. For example, it could be used to spell the pronoun that we would translate into English as him, that is su. But the most common place you'll probably see this is in a word for king, nasut. Now, originally this was probably nisut. It's kind of a long story and somewhat debated. But it would literally mean essentially either he of the sedge or he who owns the sedge or to whom the sedge belongs. And this word is sometimes fully spelled out like this, although you'll notice the N is kind of in what you might expect to be the wrong place, and that is simply because it fits better there. The ancient Egyptians, as I've talked about in other videos, often move things around so that the group of hieroglyphs can be a nice sort of square or rectangular unit without any weird gaps. So that's what they've done here by putting the N after instead of before the Sioux plant. But oftentimes they'll also use the Sioux plant by itself or the Sioux plant with just a tea bread loaf uh, as the full word for Nesut without the N written in there. And the king could be referred to by a whole different variety of terms, but this one in particular is really quite popular. And the plant, the sedge plant, is associated with Upper Egypt, but it also in this sense, refers to the eternal office of kingship more generally. And because it was used in this more general way, it's the most common, most flexible word that we see used for king. So for example, when talking about family members of the king, this is the term that's used. So the wife of the king is the Hamet Nasut, or the son of the king is the Za Nasut, and so forth. It's also the term used when talking about royal decrees, the Wedge Nasut. Now, you'll notice in these terms that the nesu comes first, even though I'm saying it second, and that is because of a practice we call honorific transposition, where the ancient Egyptians, when talking about a king or a god, will put their name or title first, even though grammatically, um, and we presume the way that it was spoken, and there's some evidence for this, we're not just presuming it, <laughs> that it actually would have come later in the phrase but they write it first as a way to honor the king or the god. Now, this is also used in related words, such as the word for kingship, which is nesuit. And in the next video, we'll see how nesuit is used with another word for king to introduce one of the king's main names that appears inside a cartouche, which you've probably seen before. I'll catch you in the next video.